want to look 10 years younger, we recommend Short North Dental for your whitening and brightening needs because nothing is sexier than a man with a great smile. Check out the newest gallery in the Arts District at shortnorthdental.com because dentistry has never looked this good. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello everybody and welcome to the Super Jcast. I'm Joel, joined by Dave McDonald. From the new apartment, finally. Hey! After 454 days, I counted. It, uh, um, it's the exact same length of time as um, the Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title reign. <laughs> <laughs> you're cool, you're cocky, you're bad. Uh, gosh almighty. That's a, that's a crazy dude. Uh, I, I mean, you got to write the book. I, I'll, be the, I'll be the first one in line. Sign it. Uh, it's, it that is craziness. But hey, home is where the heart is. Home is where the heart is. So um, I can't imagine what I, I know. You always downplay, it, but I just still again I can't imagine what you went through. The, again, the book is going to be amazing. Yeah, um, it will be mostly quite a boring book. No, it won't. <laughs> waking up in a hotel and. Walking around the hotel in areas close to the hotel and uh, doing shitty online teaching on my computer. That's about <laughs> it. But uh, All right, I mean, well, pe- people listen to this crap, so I'm sure I'm sure someone will be interested in reading that. That's a good point. You know, I, you know what? You were kind of already. You know, it, this show is, if anything, even with our bad wrestling takes, it's um, a, a a bit of a documentary of. Uh, Everything that's going on uh, again, you could you could uh, play back these these tapes for your kids. I'm sure they'll just love sitting around the couch listening to Dad yammer on about <laughs> Zack Saber Junior. <laughs> oh, Zach, oh. If nothing else, as well, you know, apart from the the wrestling tapes, I guess there is a sort of historical aspect to it as well. You know, this, right. this podcast is charting the. The, the beginning of COVID as well, and you know how that the, the genesis of that in China, and me getting worried about it being in China, and then you, understandably, well, I, I wouldn't say you weren't bothered by it. I mean, obviously, you were sort of concerned on my behalf, but we had no idea what it was going to turn into. So uh, it's a bit like a, a time capsule podcast, in a way. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, I mean, what a t- what a time to be alive, Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for everybody, really. What I mean, time I, to have two children? Right, 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 right. All I wanted to do was go to a wrestling show and have a child. Jeez, I didn't, I didn't know this was all part of the deal. Uh, yeah, but everybody. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's there's countless people that have. I mean, if you're you've been alive during this whole two year stretch, it's uh it's been a doozy, hasn't it? It's been a doozy, but uh, hopefully we've been here along the line. Uh, to brighten your day, put a smile on your face. That's why we're here. We're not here for wrestling takes, Joel. We're not here for uh, self gratifying pats on the back. We're here for uh, the fact that we can put smiles on people's faces, right? No, <laughs> we're here for us well, here for and making us laugh. The, the filthy lucre, the gold <laughs> dollars pouring into my bank account every month. I know. I, we're, that's that's. Uh, I I have two jobs. I four. I, I think I have seven jobs now. Uh, be, only because this one that I really wanted to take off never has. Just uh, never. Has. I thought I thought you were my golden goose, uh, Joel. I thought you were. I thought you were the. I thought you were the, going to be the one to take us to the next level. I, I will say this though, Joel. At least with Joel on board. Uh, I have received some money. <laughs> it's been, it hasn't been a, a, a uh, uh, I'm not Scrooge McDuck diving into a, a pot of gold, but uh, at least every once in a while, there's a couple bucks hitting my account. So, so thank you, listeners, and thank you, Joel, for that. But uh, I got to find a way to uh, capitalize on this this podcasting uh, 
conglomerate that Voices of Wrestling it seems to be uh, has a, has a iron grip on. We can't break through. That's because we don't talk about anything else. We just talk about this. We dip well, our toes. Because we don't want to do a Patreon, isn't it? And, and you know, that's that's a lot of people are doing it and make it work for them. But uh, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I've probably said it a hundred times on this podcast. Two hours a week chatting to you uh, is plenty. Plenty. <laughs> yeah. Yep, I so. mean, no, not the, the fact of talking to you. I, you know, I'll happily talk to you for many more hours than right. we do, Damon. But uh, it's not easy trying to work out these, you know, the time differences and get a couple of hours to myself to do this. I, just, I cannot imagine yeah. trying to do more than two hours, trying to do more than one show a week, but my fucking head would explode. And here's the thing too. Like we have the, we are on every corner of the globe. I mean, you are on the other side of the world to me. And then we got to factor in Dan who edits the show, of course, um, who's got his own thing. He's got his own life. He's got a band that's taken off. He's, Every every time I turn around, uh, there's new content and videos and fucking you know live performances and shit. Like he's he's trying to get this thing rocking and rolling. Pardon the pun. And uh, and then and then okay, Dan, here's here's the here's our audio. <laughs> you know, and it's like you know he's got to edit this fucking yeah, thing together. Edit it at uh, 27 minutes and, and 53 minutes because we fucked it up and then the internet dropped out at one hour and 20 minutes right. and then. The t- we accidentally insulted this person <laughs> <laughs> for 15 minutes. <laughs> Accident. Uh, yeah, it's like, you know, there's there's shit that, that, that and again, all different time zones. Like when, when we're doing this show, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan is working, right? Dan, Dan is doing his, quote, real job. Uh, and, you know, it's six o'clock in the morning. I, I literally woke right out of bed. <laughs> Maybe what? What time is it now? Uh, 20 minutes ago. Uh, in a panic. Uh, jo- you know, it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, I can't, but anyway, the bottom line is Patreon. That's, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Who would pay to hear this? You know what I mean? Like, what else are we going to bring to the table? I got no creative ideas. What are we going to talk about? Uh, like, honestly, does anybody want to sit there and, and listen to us, you know, about, the Roku Channel Show. <laughs> By the way, have you ever seen the Roku Channel Show? I have never. I, I have I've ne- never heard of the Roku Channel. I think you're making it up, Damon. I, 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 apparently, I saw this in a wrestling ring uh, at Cork and Hall. Um, I like, you know what I mean. Like, what are we going to do? I, I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. All I know is I'm picking my nose right now. I gotta. <laughs> well, I'm very excited about it. We've got a stack show today, Damon. So really? Crack on with it. Yeah, we All do. Right. We do. A lot of stuff to talk about. First thing I want to talk to you about is the Hiromu Takahashi t-shirt. Uh, mm-hmm. Have you seen it? What are your thoughts on it? Well, yes. You did send me this uh, this <laughs> t-shirt. Um, uh, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me bring it up again because uh, I'm fascinated by it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and and so one of my favorite things about this show, Damon, is when I ask you to describe uh, horny fan art or, or wacky pictures and stuff. So for the benefit of listeners who have not seen the Hiromi t-shirt design, could you describe it for us, please? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm just having difficulty finding the picture where I had it. Um, do you have it handy? Um, because I will uh, I will describe. Yeah, hold on a second. Let me, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll send it to you on the old... Uh... WeChat. WhatsApp. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, right. WhatsApp, not WeChat. I'm using fucking WeChat again. Fuck that country and their apps. Uh, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right. So here we are. This is now again. This is a T-shirt that this this gentleman expects people to wear <laughs> out in public. Uh, all right. So I, apparently the sun uh, is being split in half, and the sun looks a little goofy. He's got his tongue out. He's got a wacky face. Uh, he's being split open. The sun is being split open. Again, when I say the sun, I mean the largest star in our solar system. Uh, split open. Hiromo is there. Hiromo, uh, it looks, uh, well, first he has a quote. He's saying, I can do it. And he certainly is doing it. He's splitting open the sun. Uh, Hiromo is naked. He is. This is a cartoon illustration of Hiromo naked. Uh, and when I say naked, I mean completely naked. Uh, he has a very, uh, 
he has very full lips in this. Uh, he has his uh, he had, has red uh, dyed hair uh, down the bottom, but black on top. Very big lips he has drawn for himself. I'm assuming he's drawn it. Uh, eyebrows, a not a well defined nose, but two little dots, and then it goes on with Hiromu, uh with very long arms against breaking open the sun. Uh, nipples, areolas, uh, the size of like a, a drink coaster. Uh, they're very pronounced. Yeah. Very, right? very they're, circular. Yeah, they're very circular and very, and again, very red, very pink, very pink <laughs> and massive compared to the rest of his body. Uh, again, the, the highlights are lips and nipples, nipples and lips are and and very long arms. Um, and then as we scroll down, he's uh, managed to. Uh, Put on a little belly button, a little to signify a belly button where a belly button would be. Um, and then as we go down, yes, the uh, the the big uh, reveal, what everybody would want on their T-shirt. He has drawn in a very odd place. Wouldn't you agree? An odd place, uh, not anatomically correct. I would say uh, a set of balls. And the tiniest, tiniest penis. That's right, kids. A penis is drawn on this shirt. It is a illustration. Uh, the, so it. Well, I'm feeling quite self conscious now, Damon. I thought it was, it was quite big relative. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I got news for you. If it's anything smaller than this, good Lord Almighty. Uh, how do you find it? Uh, I and and. Uh, again, would you say anatomically correct? Uh, like the balls are hiked up to like mid, almost to its mid waist. Uh, they're not hanging at all. They're very taut. Uh, strange. Now I will say this: if you look at it, though, it does like kind of look like almost like a like a smiley face. Wouldn't you say? Like the whole thing equals out the two nipples, uh, the little belly button. And a little smiling for the balls, tiny balls, and a little, 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 little pee pee, little pee pee, uh, all equate a smiley face. Now, because I'm the king of radio, I will say this: he is completely shaven. There is not a hair to be found on Hiromo. Just FYI, Joel. I know what you're trying to do, Damon. Don't, don't, don't steal my segue away from me because I'm not. <laughs> we're, we're not done with this because I, I, oh. I have a lot of questions about this. All <laughs> right, episode. then we're staying here. We're staying no, here. I got Let's a funny do. quote retweet on Twitter from uh, Snowboy who says, "Finally, a wrestling shirt I can wear in public without getting embarrassed." <laughs> <laughs> what, right. what I want to know, Damon, is what what that meeting went like. Like, whose idea is it? Okay, so, so this is what I'm imagining, right? The, the office of um, Mr. Merchandise at New Japan, whoever that is. Mm. I'm sure, the lovely chap. Knock on door. Yeah, come in. And uh, Hiromu walks into. Oh, hi, Hiromu. How's it going? Like, yeah, yeah, good, good. I got a, uh, a merch design for you. I've uh, drawn it myself. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. can I have a look? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah, here it is. Okay. And this is you, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's me. And <laughs> what? What's? Is this your? What's this? Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's my cock and balls. <laughs> right. And you want this on a t-shirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I'm. Can we maybe do it without the cock and balls? No, 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 no way. They they made me take the cock and balls off the the cat toys that we sold. I'm not budging this time. Right. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Well, let me just make some calls. Just pick up time. Uh, yeah. Hello. Can I, uh, is that Chairman Sugabayashi? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I got Hiromu here in the office. Yeah. He's got a new merchandise idea. A t-shirt design. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That is exactly what he's done. How did you know? <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. We'll, we'll print two million of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I guess what? I guarantee you, it, they they sell two million of them. I bet you it becomes a number one selling shirt. Do you, do you think it would have made it past the the, the uh, focus testing in the Harold May era? Do you think uh, Uncle no. Harold's letting that one go on <laughs> t-shirts that children are likely to be wearing? I know. I, this is it is it, it is almost a a childlike shirt. Uh, like if you took out the cock and balls, uh, it, 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 it 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 
very well could be a, a children's shirt. I'm telling you flat out, flat out, this is going to be the top seller. And I will say this. There is not a pro wrestling t-shirt like this, right? There is not a pro wrestling t-shirt like this. Uh, now, again, that could, you, however you look at that, that uh, could be a good thing or a bad thing. I'm counting it as a good thing. Like, it is not a black t-shirt. It is not, uh, like, heavy metal script font. It is not, you know... <laughs> I mean, it's weirdly embarrassing. Like, I don't think, I, no, let's put it this way. I, there would, I would not be caught dead in it. But I could see where people would be like, I'm, I mean, of all the shit that people wear, it's not like this is that out there. Um, it's out there in the pro wrestling t-shirt world. But, yeah, it, it's different, man. It, it, and, and it suits, I think it's going to sell. I think it's going to sell like fucking hotcakes. I really do. Well, as you pointed out earlier, he is completely uh, smooth down there. Uh, do you think that, that is an accurate reflection of Hiromu's um, pubic situation in real life? I mean, listen, the way I see it is he's drawing what he is, right? Apparently, he is a big nippled man and apparently a very uh, taut testicle. A very, you know, very, must be... Uh, must be super cold, uh, taut testicles and a small penis. But again, clean shaven. Again, I did. I did want to point that out, Joel. Clean shaven. All right. Well, I, I can't think of a segue for the Manscaped ad read this week. So, can you oh. uh, just talk to us about Manscaped, please, David? <laughs> no. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> no. So let's just move on to a separate topic. Manscaped. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Very good. Well, look. Again, being that Hiromu, he knows where it's at, right? He knows where it's at. Uh, and I think we all do at this point, right? I think we all do. Our good friends at Manscaped have uh, made it very easy for you to replicate the Hiromu. Let's call it the Hiromu from now on. Uh, let's give it a name, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's sweeping the nation. The T-shirt speaks volumes for how clean and fresh and oh, just wonderful you're going to feel with Manscaped. Manscaped.com is where you got to go to get this. Get the, complete the look. Complete the Hiromu look. Again, we're anti-Bruiser Brody. We're pro Hiromu, right? 3.0. That manscaping trimmer, it's now available for purchase, right? Fantastic. Uh, third generation Manscaped trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade. And what does that do? That prevents manscaping accidents. And we know what that accident means. Now you're looking like Bruiser Brody, all right? A big, hairy fucking bush and bleating all over the place. Jesus Christ. Well, look. Get it now. Because millions of balls are about to be Nick free. Nick Rhodes from Duran Duran free. Thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. Look. It's the shaver. It's got a light for crying out loud. It's about the uh, deodorants and creams to make your balls smell fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, and you can get it all. 20% off, free shipping. It's Hiromo season, everyone, with the code SuperJCast. Excuse me, just, is it SuperJCast? What is our code? JCast. Just JCast. Forget the super. I guess I got an old copy point. Uh, forget the super. It's just JCast. How easy. 20% off, free shipping. JCast is your code at manscaped.com. Listen, your balls will thank you. Your uh, nether regions, they'll thank you. I can't, I can't stress it enough. I use the darn thing. I'm all cleaned up. I'm all ready to go. Ready to go out uh, right, right out in the town. Two vaccines and a shaved ball. 23 skidoo. Woo! Look, 20% off, free shipping. It's easy. You know you want to try it. You know you know you do. Don't sit there and act like, uh, no. You do. You've been thinking about it. Pull the trigger. Get on manscaped.com. 20% off and free shipping. They got something for everyone. And I'm telling you, your lover is going to love you for it. Right? Manscaped.com. JCAS is the code. 
for 20, 20% off and free shipping. You can't beat that. Our good friends at Manscaped got it going on. Again, a 7,000 RPM motor. Quiet stroke technology on the shaver. It's fantastic. I love it. You can get yours. 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com. Another quick thing I wanted to touch on, Damon, was a, a song that our friend Manabu sent us from The Lethal Weapons. The song is called 94's Pro Wrestling. What did you think of this one? I thought it was a lot of fun. I saw this. Yes. Uh, I miss him. I miss everyone, actually. But I miss him. Um, we don't talk as much. I, and, I, and I got my strong zeros back. The, the, ones, the very saw... same ones that he bought me. I'm so I'm just stunned that I managed to get my hands on them again because I thought they'd either get drunk or confiscated or lost in the shuffle. But I've got all my strong zeros, and not only that, Manabu is sending us so great and entertaining wrestling theme music to listen to. I know, like he. First of all, that was an epic day. Uh, it was it was epic, and it was um, the, my downfall. <laughs> Because, again, they're there. I mean, what am I going to do? Let them sit there like you did? You know? Have them... Yeah. No. He, bought, he bought us one of each flavor. So it would be impolite not to drink all of them before the start right. of the Kingdom 14 <laughs> night one. Exactly. Uh, you know, I don't want to carry them all around. I got to, you know, I got to, I got to, I got to, you know, show my appreciation. Boy, did I ever. Um, yeah, that was a great day. I, that's what I miss. I miss the most. That was great. Um, but I did see that video. With, that was really good. Um, he sent me another one, too. Um, let me go back and see. Oh, all of their songs are really good. I definitely recommend you people checking out. I, I did tweet it out uh, a few days ago, uh, the Lethal Weapons song, uh, the title, which was 94's Pro Wrestling. But, yeah, their whole back catalog is very entertaining. So, uh, yeah, Music Joel this week, given... Uh, a thumbs up for the lethal weapons. <laughs> the lethal weapons. I see the guy dancing around, running around. Uh, yeah, and it's in, you know, he's and they have like that nineteen eighties like thin guitar. <laughs> it's, it's just like it's like Devo. Uh, it's pretty great. Uh, I mean, are they? A, they're not a popular. Would, they, would you say they're a popular band? In yeah, I think so. They yeah. seem to have a pretty large Twitter following. I've I've been doing my research, but yeah, this song stood out to me because it's. It's like a tribute to the '94 J Cup, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, opening. They're like rest. They're like you know, backyard wrestling by this. Um, I don't even know what you would call. Uh, like just like a reservoir, and then there's they they have inter interspurted. Is that the word? Like clips. Yeah. Is there's like uh, El Samurai and Otani and, and, the, and the thing. Yeah. And they mention wrestlers. Uh, you know, Liger obviously is in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wonder if they are. I wonder if they are really big. Are they big? Maybe they're big. They got a lot of likes on this. They got like almost three thousand. Oh, there's Benoit. Well, well done Eddie. to uh, the Lethal Weapons. Big, big fan. Yeah, nice the, job. Super Jack Cost. Uh, okay, oh, speaking of band, oh, before before you go, oh, go on, on, you know what? There's a band that follows us. That they're like a punk band uh, in the in the Piss Northeast. Jeans. Yes, I couldn't believe it. I was like I, can't, I like I was kind of just one day scrolling through our followers just because I wanted to just say I, I, I'm just curious, um, and I, yeah I saw that and I was like oh my god I I've I've heard I've, I think I've actually seen them, um, yeah there's I, I was, I'm I'm amazed by some of our followers like and they're like it was weird because when I, when I saw it it was right before COVID and I was like oh it wouldn't be cool if I just went to a show. I got backstage and hooked up with some groupie. <laughs> oh, that would never. Uh, you know, uh, but then I never got. And then I looked back again. I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I don't know. We have a lot of cool followers. Yeah, I'm just looking at this uh, Twitter account. So this is um, the producer of the Lethal Weapons, and they've got uh, 16,000 followers. So, oh, yeah. yeah, pretty good going. Yeah, so, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's for fucking truth. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a uh, bit of news that came out today. Uh, this one was really interesting. That show is taking part in Glate. I believe that's what? how it's pronounced. G L E A T. So, show is going to represent New Japan and Chaos in a UWF rules action against oh, Takanori God. Ito. 
in Tokyo Dome City Hall next week. So oh, a God. bit of information about uh, Glates, so courtesy of uh, Andrew Rich and also Liam Jones from Voices of Wrestling. So um, this is a promotion that was founded uh, last August after Lidet Entertainment, the former parent company of Pro Wrestling Noah, teamed up with uh, Ricky Choshu and UWF stalwart Kiyoshi Tomorrow to get back into pro wrestling business. And shortly after, while they're working for Noah, Kazuyashi and Nosawa Rongai both joined the company, took positions backstage, but Nosawa left the startup promotion to focus on his duties of pro wrestling Noah. So this company used to own Noah for a year before they sold it to Cyber Agent. And so Glate have two divisions. There's regular pro wrestling and UWF rules. So notable names involved are Shima. Shima? Seema? Yeah, he's the uh, Dragon Geek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the Strong Hearts guy. Uh, T Hawk, L Lindemann, Kaz Hayashi, Minoru Tanaka, uh, Kiyoshi Tamura, and Ricky Choshu. Uh, so thanks, uh, Andrew. And the, if you want to read more about it, Liam Jones on, on Voice Wrestling as a person, you want to check out because uh, Liam's done some great information, great write ups about Glate. So spell that for me. This. Can you spell that for me? Glate? G G L E A T. It looks like it should be pronounced Gleet. So in my head, it's Gleet, but I yeah. believe it's Glate, if not Great. Oh, uh, that's what they're trying to do. It might them. actually be Great. Liam says it's pronounced Great. So okay. I'm calling it Glate. Yeah, I'm going Glate. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's the acronym they give me. That's the acronym I'm working with. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting one. Um, first of all, what is a UWF Rules match? Yeah, so it's kind of like worked pro wrestling the way it was back in the day, right? Um, you know, very – it's worked, should I say, worked uh, as a shoot, but it's it's worked pro wrestling. Um, very, you know, no high spots, no – a lot of grappling, a lot of, uh, you know, kicks, strikes. But, uh, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Didn't it show – correct me if I'm wrong. It was show. Didn't he do like some MMA thing or he was scheduled to do some MMA fighting here in the States, right? And uh, what happened? Did it get canceled or I could have sworn show has done at least a match, an MMA, a, a, a straight MMA match. Um, I, I, why, am, why is that ringing in my head? I don't know. That's not ringing a bell for me. I mean, I know he had that best of super juniors match with Kushida a few years ago. That was very sort of grapple heavy. Uh, it's quite divisive. I liked it. Um, but it does raise questions about, you know, what are the implications of show working uh, with this company? So a few questions here. Mark says, with Hiromu Hurt and now Leo Russian ACH retiring again, the junior division pool, and even the strong junior pool of people who could do a best of the super juniors tour is so incredibly thin. Do you think New Japan goes sniffing around other companies to sign someone or does the forbidden door swing the other way to bring in a junior to New Japan? And Perez also says, is show working great a sign of more collaboration coming with other Japanese promotions or is it just a show thing? So do you think this is the start of uh, uh, some sort of burgeoning uh, cooperation between the two companies like you know maybe we'll get l lindemann in best of the super juniors or do you think this is just show doing something that show wants to do i think it's a show doing something that show wants to do uh, here we go so um uh show was scheduled to make a mixed martial arts debut may 27th 2017 uh fighting nicholas troches in queens new york for golden mma championship i guess this is when he was um still on excursion right um, and, and again, around that area is where he, he, his, he stayed. Um, like, so that was like, back when he was a tempura boy. Yeah, correct. So, um, I knew, I knew I remembered that. Uh, so yeah, I think this is just a thing he wants to do. Um, I can't imagine New Japan having a, a partnership or having anyone else get too involved. But again, you know, we talk about partnerships and, and I guess, you know, we, Yuji Nagata holding the All Japan tag straps, you know, for a time a couple years back. Uh, you know, El Desperado breaking his jaw, <laughs> you know, in a death match. Uh, you know, so it's not like it's too a wacky a concept of guys just popping in and out. The company seems somewhat flexible um, when it comes to that. It's not, you know, you know, I know everybody's kind of like, Oh, the partnership with with uh, I guess they think everything's got to be a partnership as if it were Ring of Honor or a partnership as if it were uh, CMLL, 
And sometimes it's just, you know, one offs and guys doing, uh, I'm going to, can I work the show? Yeah, we're not doing anything good. You know what I mean? Like that, that's the way I see it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard not to get carried away with yourself. When you see that sort of stuff, you immediately start thinking, oh, invasions and, and uh, right. joint promoted super shows and everything. But uh, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll pump the brakes on that one for now uh, and see if there's more to it than just a one-off match with show having some fun with UWF rules match. Because uh, uh, yeah, as you pointed out, that's something he he's enjoyed dipping his toes into. Um, yeah, I touched on there with the question, the, the also the retirement of ACH. Um yeah. You know, obviously this is not the first time we've had retirements from Leo Rush uh, and, and ACH. Do you think we'll see either of them wrestling for New Japan again in the future? I do. Um, it's hard for pro wrestlers to stay retired. Let's put it that way. Um, oh, so I should caveat. Obviously, Leo Rush does have some contracted dates uh, to work right. for New Japan, which he will be doing, but beyond those. Right. Um it's again. It's hard for pro wrestlers to sit to completely turn their backs and say goodbye. Um, it's it's it seems like it is the most difficult thing for 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 pro wrestlers to do. Um, so I would say the odds are against that uh, of him completely stepping away and never stepping foot in a ring again, um, let alone a New Japan ring. But correct me if I'm wrong again. Didn't ACH also retire at one time when? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. Right. So again, it's not, you know, it's not like we haven't heard this before. Um, which is a shame because both guys I like. Uh, and both guys I feel like, and, and, and again, what do I know? But I don't think they're not would, doing it disingenuously, are they? I mean, I'm sure they no. it, they they mean it and they intend oh, to yeah. retire. But uh, yeah, sometimes, yeah, like you say, the way life pans out, you, you end up changing your mind about things. And that, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, he's retired. Let's put it this way. He's retired this week. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and I think let's take it by a week by week basis. I wish they would, would, wouldn't say retire. Because I think that retire has gotten so watered down that it's like, no, I don't think many people, many people are, are handle it just like you said, you know, okay, you're, you're gone for now. We'll see you. We'll see you in a little bit, hopefully. You know what I mean? Like take a break, uh, you know, do whatever you got to do to get the love back or, you know, financial situations, whatever it is. Right. Um, but I think everybody in their minds feels like the same way as I do is the sense that. It's hard for you to get it out of your get it out of your heart, get it out, you know, and, and completely step away. Some people do, some people absolutely do. I did. I mean, I didn't do any shit. I didn't do fuck all of pro wrestling, but okay, the little bit that I did, I you know, the, my last thing was my last thing. I didn't do shit after. Um, and some people can do that, uh, but I think the majority can't, and and I think the proof is in the history of pro wrestling. Okay, another tidbit here on September fourteenth and fifteenth, there will be an event at Korakuen. Honoring the 70th anniversary of the original Japan Pro Wrestling. So New Japan, All Japan, NOAA, and many other promotions will participate. So Damon, is this the start of collaboration between all the companies and a huge, <laughs> huge super show? Yep. yep it's a, we're going to have one, one pro wrestling promotion in Japan. And it's going to be everyone together. Uh, and and everyone's going to make money, and everyone's going to be harmonious in the in the in the, the division of the money. Uh, there will be no squabbles. No, there will be no wrestlers trying to break out and form their own promotions because they think they are the star, and they think they are underutilized. So yes, uh, it is the beginning of that of that era of of Japanese. Uh, pro wrestling, which will soon come to the United States, uh, where we will have one promotion, and everyone will work together. And then there will be just <laughs> one <laughs> wrestling which promotion. Which is just going to be called wrestling. <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> that's right. That That's correct. That is correct. It'll be uh, wrestling. Uh, it, that's what it says on the marquee, Jaws, as everyone used to say back in the day. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's, that's where we're going with. We're going for one pro wrestling promotion, headed yes. by... <laughs> <laughs> Who's heading this? Who would who would you say should head the the one the singular world wrestling promotion, Joel? Who should that person be? Um, what well, in terms of who's you know the figureheads and who's got the book? Correct, and, uh, Dick Togo. Of course, thank you. I'm, we're on the same page. <laughs> 
Uh, speaking of uh, big wrestling collaborations, a huge announcement in the world of uh, US wrestling, Damon. How excited are you for Satoshi Kojima versus William Morrissey, a.k.a. Big Cass? I got excited when people were talking about Morrissey, and I was like... <laughs> I was I saw a lot of lot of scuttlebutt about Morrissey in pro wrestling. I was like, wow, this is a this is a weird turn for the Moz. Uh and then I thought, ah, that's, that seems very let me dig a little bit deeper. And it was not. It was not the singer of the Smiths. It was not. Thank God. Uh he would be uh crushed. Um uh, anywho, uh yeah. Big Cass, right? We haven't uh, seen him since he jumped over the garden. Yeah, the rail. Square garden in that <laughs> hot feud with uh, Gorillas of Destiny and the Briscoes. <laughs> uh, did oh, you know what? The last time I, I think I, I, I mean, truth be told, the last time I heard about him was when he when he had that incident in um, in Rawway, where I, well, I don't know, like the, I know the police had to get involved and and um. He was having some issues. He was, and, and I don't even know if those issues have been solved. I don't know. I hope so. But he was having some yeah. issues. He, looks, and, he uh, looks in good, good shape. He looks like he's turned things around. So, yeah. yeah hopefully it works I hope out. so. I mean, listen, he looked good then. You know what I mean? Like, so well, who knows? But uh, my point being is in the. I will say this about pandemic era pro wrestling there have been plenty of times. Plenty of times where you're left scratching your head. I one, I never thought this would be presented to me, and two, uh, uh, it happens all the time, right? Like it's again. I said it before. Pandemic shut down a lot of pro wrestling. And there's a lot of companies that just aren't making, not only not making any money, but uh, need all the help they can get. And it's, and you know, it's, it's strange things happen when people need to put food on their table. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's a dream match, I would say. I don't, I don't know if I would put it under dream match category, but it is one of those Maybe things a, where. Maybe a fever dream match. Yeah, right. Right, right. But this is I like this is the equivalent of putting a bunch of wrestlers' names in a hat and or putting it on random on Fire Pro and here's what you got. And 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 laughing with your friends and being like, all right, let's fucking do it. <laughs> you know? That this is exactly what that feels like. Uh, so hey, look, I mean I'm not saying it won't work, but I never thought I would see this. Yeah, that's true. Well, the other big news from uh, the world of US wrestling is we're going to have NJPW Resurgence on August 14th at the Torch at LA Coliseum. So uh, I, I believe that's uh, going to be an outdoor show in the, the forecourt of the Coliseum. So maybe under 2,500 capacity there. Uh, participating wrestlers announced are the IWGP US heavyweight champion John Moxley, the never openweight champion Jay White, strong openweight champion Filthy Tom Lawler, uh, the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, Finn Juice, Shota Umino, Ren Narita, Carl Fredericks, Clark Connors, Alex Coglin, Hikaleo, Fred Rossa, Leo Rush, Brody King, Chris Dickinson, TJP, JR Kratos. More names Damn. to come. I mean, this is a great lineup, I think. I think this is yeah. a terrific lineup, even without uh, any Japan based talent announced. Um, I mean, Tanahashi was featured in the video, so we'll see. I, I wouldn't bet against him being uh, a part of that show. So. What do you think about this, Damon? Are you going to be going? Uh, I, I'll tell you what. If this if this were East Coast, I I would. I absolutely would. If this were on the East Coast, I would go. Um, I, I don't think I'm going to fly out to California, mind you, um, at this short notice. Uh, but I'm th- I'm thrilled. I'm psyched. I'm pumped for this. I think this show will be fantastic. And again, finally. Finally, fans and uh, a noisy crowd. Uh, you know they're going to be they're going to be amped up. And I and I correct me if I'm wrong. I I mean people are going to be flying in for this. These tickets will go fast. I'm going to predict it right now. Ready for this? You want a prediction? Sell out. Sell out. And here's the thing with this. So they're 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 it's outdoor, right? From what we understand, 
2,500 seats. Outdoor, we can find some more folding chairs, right? (laughs) Right? There's no fire code, right? Find some more fucking folding chairs. I'm telling you right now, those 2,500 seats are going to go. I I predict a sellout. I predict a riot. I predict a sellout. Kaiser Chiefs, remember them, Joel? Yes, yeah, I do. I actually know that song. It, it, it played in all the nightclubs when I was a, a student at university. It's a good, good nightclub go. scene in Brighton, where, where I studied. I went to the University of Sussex, so uh, and I hated them. So <laughs> <laughs> I just it probably wasn't for me. What, what I ended up doing by uh, like a, a year or two into my student life was I joined for all like the pre-club drinks, and I just go to bed afterwards. Then okay. I was happy. <laughs> Oh, you hated the clubs. You, you, yeah. You, you, but you, the Kaiser Chiefs are okay, right? You like them? They're fine. Oh, God, Joel. They're, they were good. They were really I good. I don't know. I'm not into popular music. What can I say? I know. I'm a, I'm a Pop- post-hardcore kind of guy. I know. You really are. You really are. All right. Well, there you right. go. Kaiser uh, yeah, Chiefs so reference. Resurgence. Okay, so I, I think it's really interesting that this is going to feature three singles champions in action, so Mox and, and Jay White and Filthy Tom. Which of those titles... Would you like to see defended and against whom? Do you think we'll see all three of them defended? Wouldn't that be something? Why not? You would think, all right, you would think if you're bringing in Mox, you're defending the title, right? I mean, that, I think that's, I don't, I'm not going to say a given, but I, I would strongly think that that would be the case. Two, you got fans in, in the building for the first time for strong. You would think we're seeing a filthy time Tom Lawler defense, right? I mean, the first show with fans, you gotta have you gotta gotta defend that title, right? Um and then what what do we got? Jay White, you said? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you think will he see him defending his never open weight title? I wouldn't I, I listen, I don't see why not. But if but if there's going to be anybody that's gonna be stuck in a tag match, I would think it might be Jay White. Maybe. Um, and you know what? Now I'm thinking of it. You could, I mean, you technically could do uh, Mox in a tag, but I don't know. I think if you bring him in, he defends the title. I put him over, you know. Um, yeah, you got a possibility of having all three. I mean, look, I think a definite is Tom Waller. Uh, and I would, I would go him definite. I would go Mox probably. And then I would go J, maybe. Let's put it that way. And I guess the moxing is uh, interesting in, in as much as he's obviously allowed to work New Japan shows in the States uh, in front of fans. So how big do you think this is? Like, what do you think has changed? I think that one, again, I think COVID played a, a big factor in all this. Everybody's trying to make money and everybody's trying to help everybody out, which is, uh, again... For 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 money, people will put aside differences. Um, I think that I think there's a lot of people in in all these promotions where it makes it easier for those differences and those disagreements and those past incidences to be smoothed over. Right. So again, you got Gallows and Anderson in. TNA and along with you know Kenny winning the championship and uh you know you you've got familiar faces there in AEW uh and again you got Bucks you've got everybody that you know Jericho and and everybody there um and then again New Japan it's not like they don't know you know Rocky and and um you know anybody else that that has some stroke in that company. So it just makes it a little bit easier for people to communicate because everybody knows each other and to at least start that that method of of sharing talent. And you know, it starts small but then it snowballs. Uh and I think that makes it easier. And when when that's not there, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Now again, nobody's nobody's going to be communicating with WWE. And well, I mean, not according to Dave, anyway. <laughs> but you know, uh, it, things like this happen, 
I, I, this is what I don't understand. Things like this happen a lot. And, and again, I'm going to use the craziest scenario maybe in my, in my lifetime was Liger going to NXT for a shot in Brooklyn where the day before New Japan and, and Ring of Honor are running the baseball stadium. And Liger's not even on that show. So, you know, it's, it's, stranger things have happened. Uh, and again, it, it just makes it easier when you have pockets of people in these different promotions that communicate all the time, that are friendly outside the ring, able to help bridge the gap to the people that might be above them to help smooth some things over and get some working relationships done. And, and again, I think COVID played a large factor in that. Yeah, I guess one of the silver linings of the, this whole pandemic situation is that it has led to New Japan vastly, in my opinion, improving their, their US-based roster, as well as uh, yeah, opening the doors to the collaboration between other companies like uh, Impact and, and AEW. And yeah, I just, this, this whole resurgence show is very apt. It's called that because it just feels like, a, like I said on Twitter, like a we're back moment. And um, a small thing as well, but the the, the indies are, seem to be getting back on their feet as well. There was a West Coast Pro there, and that's the double main event, one of them being Carl Fredericks versus Jarrell Nelson in San Francisco on July the 9th. So I think that's really good news for the New Japan talent that's in the USA at the moment because they can get some more experience outside of the, the empty arena shows in Strong and, and work with new people in front of fans. And uh, Tim Dog on Twitter pointed out that before Carl went to work in the LA Dojo, he made his name in the Bay Area for years. So this is a kind of homecoming for him. So um, really exciting times in the US. It is. And you know what it feels like, Joel? And, and I was talking to somebody else about this, but I'll bring it here. Um, it feels like this is the closest we've felt like to old school territory days in years. Like it really feels that way, um, where guys can work and pop in and out of, you know, somewhat, I don't, again, we'll put it in air quotes, major promotions, um, in and out rather frequently. I, again, not maybe not on a whim, but there's there's this idea of collaboration between all these different promotions um i mean look at look at finley and and juice look at look at kenta um again you fly over yuji nagata uh you got your strong you got uh impact you've got aew you got ring of honor you you know so you got all these little pockets that seem to be almost territory based right now where you got you know AEW kind of occupying a lot of you know the the southeast for a, a, a large part of the time um again they're they're touring again but you get my point strong up and uh, out in the west you know maybe a a AWA territory right uh ring of honor northeast uh yeah it just kind of it kind of feels a little bit like that um, and it's the first time that you, you felt that way for a while where you would, a guy would pop on Georgia championship wrestling. And then, you know, two weeks later he's on world class or, you know, whatever kind of feels that way a little bit. Luke writes into ask, uh, do Jay White and the good brothers interact with each other on the USA show? Do you think we're going to see some past and present bullet club interaction? I mean, Maybe. <laughs> right, I mean that, that's a, it's a possibility if, if if it's there. I don't know. I don't know if they tag. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, why not? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why not? Uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think it's in, well, we'll come into it later. But I think it's inevitable that we're going to see Anderson and Gallows working back in New Japan uh, at some point sooner or later. And yeah. yeah, why would you not do the whole Bullet Club thing? Because that's you know that's that's at the heart of it. So. Uh, yeah, I would be shocked if it didn't happen, to be honest. Um, yeah, some teasing of it, at least. I mean, at, at least a little, you know, a glance, uh, a little a little hanging around in the ring a little bit longer than, you know, you would expect. Or something, you know, who knows? But, yeah, I think some, I mean, plant a seed here um, if eventually you're going to bring them in and, you know, away you go. Uh, we've had a few match announcements as well. So uh, the movie Godzilla vs. Kong presents Summer Struggle in Sapporo. July 10th, we're going to get El Desperado vs. Taiji Ishimori for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. And July the 11th, we've got Dangerous Techers, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and Taichi 
versus Sanada and Naito for the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Uh, I've quite enjoyed the build to this so far. Naito's been very silly, uh, asking for autographs from dangerous techers, and then they said, no, you have to beg for it, and then he takes his hat off and says, por favor, and Sanada's playing a straight man to Naito's antics. It's been good fun, actually. Um, so Bush asks, what's the likelihood of Naito Sanada beating techers and then facing a team like Okada Tanahashi for the tag belts at one of the Dome shows? So do you think God this... Damn. This is going to lead on to uh, a future match at the Dome. <sighs> Again, Naito Sonata versus Okada and Tanahashi. Wow. I mean, that's... I like three quarters of that match. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I take it back. No, that, I would be into that. That would be really good. I, th- I think Sonata is a, a very good tag wrestler. Yeah. I mean, that would be something. That would be really great. That would feel like those titles really mean something. I mean, you got some big, big guns. And it, it makes sense. Everybody, everybody in that fucking match is banged up. Everybody in that match could use to be in a long-term tag scenario. Mm. My, I'm, I'm, my mouth is watering just thinking of what that could be, what that could look like. I don't think it's going to happen. But boy, imagine that. Imagine those titles being relevant. And, and, and I'm going to say, Techers helped. Techers helped. Not, Techers didn't help. Techers, they were, they were a... a, a a big reason why people care about these titles right now. I mean, we ha- look, Joel, we had Tanahashi Ibush for a little bit, right? Do, do you think we could pull off a Tanahashi Okada? I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm stretching here, and I'm really reaching for the stars. But could you imagine that? That would be pretty yeah. fucking excellent. Yeah. I mean, and it makes sense. <laughs> right. And I would say enjoy that speculation while you can before we <laughs> end up in the Shit scenario of uh, Gorillas of Destiny and the Good Brothers feuding over the titles for until the end of time. So <laughs> enjoy this freshness while it lasts. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I think we're 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 I think we're speculating and and working ourselves into a froth over something that has about a one percent chance of happening. Well, sticking with uh, Wrestle Grand Slam, so this is July 25th. Uh, Wrestle Grand, S- Grand Slam in the Tokyo Dome will be main evented by Shingo Takagi, defending the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship against Kota Ibushi. And this led to some interesting discussion on Twitter at the time. As our resident Ibushi scholar, Booz Epcorn, pointed out, Ibushi's now main eventing four out of the last five Tokyo Dome uh, shows. So that's Wrestle Kingdom 14 Night 1, Wrestle Kingdom 15 Nights 1 and Night 2, and Wrestle Grand Slam which you know, is an amazing achievement in and of itself. And also the last three G1 finals, they, they're really leaning on Ibushi in these big spots. And I think he's delivered in pretty much all of them. The only one I say under-delivered was the Sanada G1 final last year, which was good, not great, but I don't think that was Ibushi's fault. But aside from that, they've all been big hits. And, and I feel that Kota Ibushi is a guy who doesn't get the love that he deserves from the Western fandom. And... You know, this is a run that started out with him putting over Tanahashi in the 2018 G1 final. He put over Kenny in the, the three-way with Cody at King of Pro Wrestling. He put over Osprey at Wrestle Kingdom 13 in the Never Title match. He put over Okada and Jay White, both nights at Wrestle Kingdom 14. Uh, not to mention the whole eating the, the shit with the title unification thing. Then losing to Osprey again. I mean, I, in terms of, if we're talking selfless people, you know, people who are being leaned upon so often to put over others in huge spots, then... It's. I think that's just. It's quite remarkable about how often they go to Ibushi to to deliver in these kind of spots, and that he doesn't really. I, I don't think he gets the praise for it. Where do you think he doesn't get the praise? Because I think he gets. I mean, I I would put him right up there in the in the the upper echelon of New Japan talent. Like, is he, he not? He like, never gets, he never gets mentioned in the same. With the same sort of love and adulation as you know Tanahashi or Okada or, or Naito or you know the that's big the names. promotion. You bl- you blame New Japan for that. 
like the guy himself, I think, gets praised by everyone. I don't know anyone who shits on Kota Bushi, right? And, and if they are, they're dead wrong. They couldn't be more wrong. Uh, He's not shitting on him. Okay, well, let me let me frame it differently. So, uh, yeah, Booz went on to say, uh, talk about being the elite. And she says uh, she thinks being the elite helped create and shape the narrative for newer Western fans that Ibushi... Well, Ibushi's introduction for a lot of new fans was that he's, you know, he was Kenny's sidekick. He was Kenny's buddy. And this, uh, you know, being the elite, he was a mysterious character whose few lines were never translated outside of one referencing the box that held the golden elite shirt. And uh, she also mentions the the coolness factor. Cause, you know, he's not overly charismatic, larger than life as Tanahashi or Okada, Naito and Jay. He's an insanely gifted athlete with freak genetics who's a uh, very odd wrestling savant. His promos inhabit the space of quiet earnestness and Rick Astley lyrics. So do you think there's something to that in the way that Ibushi has been or was introduced sort of around 2018 and the fact that he doesn't have this, you know, super cool gimmick and personality that his peers do? Uh, yes, but but those people, I mean, let's be truthful. They're either gone They've either checked out of New Japan Pro Wrestling, or I mean, do we is that an is that a voice that you know we need to convert, <laughs> right? Like I, I you know, it's kind of like you know, I hate to give terrible analogies, but you know, people have different levels of their understanding and appreciation and their 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 how deep of a dive they want to go in pro wrestling. And to me, those people who see him in that light are are maybe more surface fans than than others, right? Um, they're they're there for for other reasons, and they get their enjoyment from pro wrestling for other reasons. Uh, and I don't think that they I, I, like that's not a, that's not somebody that um you know I appreciate the fact that they're spending money and they they like they like what they like and go for it. But to me, I'm not gonna waste my you know thought process on somebody who thinks of of Kota Ibushi in this like kind of sidekick role f- for anybody let alone Kenny Omega um i think we know i think I, what is it if you know you know right you know um but i don't think anybody in the circles that at least i hang with or talk to, which is you, <laughs> um, that, that would 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 categorize Kota Ibushi as in, in, as anything but an a a, a Mount Rushmore kind of guy in New Japan, especially in the past four years. Get, and there, there's no one else. Um, now, if Nicole feels like, and again, she is the Kota Ibushi scholar that that. And again, she 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 would know if she she's getting that feedback from people. But again, is it from people that she respects when it comes to that opinion, or is it just a a random feeling? Now, if if she if if she and and people that have similar passion for Kota Bushi in pro wrestling feel that he hasn't been put on that M- Mount Rushmore, especially. In these past years, given the same stature as Tanahashi, as Okada, as Naito, um, you got to blame the company. You got to blame blame the company because I will say this: I think the company, even though they put him in these big roles to do these, you know, to to take the ball and run with it and be the guy that we need you to have the great matches in all these marquee events. Even though that's the case, I don't think the company's done a good, a good enough job of making uh, him that guy. Like we know under the surface that he should be that guy, but I think that this and again, I think disrespect is a bad word. But I just think that if we're being honest, I don't think they did a good job of presenting Kota Abushi as a guy who's a Tanahashi, an Okada, and a Naito. Okay, you may. Lots of good points there. I, I, I can, yeah, definitely think uh, that yeah, maybe within our fandom that he is getting the, the praise that he deserves, but maybe within uh, 
circles of fans who are not as deep into New Japan as we are that, yeah, they've yet to come around to what, what a really special talent he is. Um, but what, what do you think about having this as the main event at Tokyo Dome, Shingo versus Ibushi? How excited are you for that? Fantastic. Uh, it'll be, this will be, again, a fantastic match. And it'll help solidify Shingo as wrestler of the year, right? Uh, again, Will being injured put a little bit of a damper on that. And it was a it was a it was a two horse race um, between those two for wrestler of the year. But these these events are going to help push him over the top. And then again, we say it all the time, but we haven't even touched on G one. We haven't even got there yet, and that's also going to help solidify him. So, yep, this will be great. I think it's great that that, that it is fresh faces. Uh, I think it's great that it's that is. Here's the thing. Neither of these two guys are fresh off the apple tree, right? Neither of these guys. I know Kota Bushi looks like he's 19. He's not 19. I know Shingo feels fresh and new, uh, a, uh, a, a young 25-year. He's not. These guys have been around the block, and it's nice to have both these guys. And again, we talked about Kota Bushi headlining Big events being counted on to to, to be a guy, but uh, you know, it's nice, it's fresh, it's it's, and we know it's going to be a great match. So yeah, I'm all for it. Love it. Okay. Also, uh, Toriano has been uh, inviting KOPW challengers for a rumble match at the Dome, so I expect we might see oh. that. <laughs> Ashley Tosh says expected car for the Tokyo Dome show? Question mark. We've only had the main event announced so far. And I'd assume at least two other big matches as well since it's at the Dome. So, yeah, we've speculated maybe the tag titles could be on the line there. And maybe, what, what would you say to possibly the return of Hiromi Takahashi coming back to get his junior title from Despi? Mm. He did mention that he was coming back soon, right? And that was a little bit ago. It was a couple weeks ago. That'd be a nice spot, wouldn't it? Be a nice spot. Hopefully he's okay. Now that what was it, pec? Pectoral, right? Was it a pectoral? But it was a muscle tear, yes. right? Yes. Oh, maybe that's okay. what was referenced in the illustration on his T-shirt. Today. Oh. Maybe, they, maybe those were the big no- <laughs> powerful they were nipples. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, shave a little bit off my cock. I got plenty to spare. <laughs> put it, in, put it in my pecs. Uh, that'd be a nice spot. Big building. You know, we wanna, we wanna get some eyeballs on the event. We wanna sell some t-shirts. Uh, yep. Uh, look, if he can go, that's a good spot for him. And uh, speaking of big shows, September fourth and fifth, Wrestle Grand Slam continues. Wow. At Saitama MetLife Dome. Look, they're running these big buildings, man. <laughs> they, they, need, they need money the worst. <laughs> I mean, they got to make... Right? So this, this one, it, uh, the Tokyo Dome shows next month. And yeah. these two Dome shows will be in September. So plenty of time for us to get excited about it. But yeah, you, you can tell they're quite keen on uh, selling as many tickets as they can. Yep, they sure are. Uh, who can blame them, right? Who can blame them? I wonder what the rent is, though, for it. I mean, what is, what's the break even for uh, something like that? It's got to be – they got to sell at least X tickets to break even on a, on a on the rent on a building like that. Um, but again, you would figure even the buildings are kind of like, oh, just, anybody, can we can we do a, a live Super J cast they book us? <laughs> Please, we just need somebody to, to fill this building. Uh, but we're not filling the building. To be very clear, let's make that. We'll have we'll get thirty people <laughs> total total attendance. Thirty. Um, look, well, yeah, one they, person being Manabu, the other twenty nine being the different flavors of Strong Zero, <laughs> right? With masks on, right? And masquerading as people, cardboard cutouts. Uh, I don't know. It, <sighs> I don't know what the situation is going to look like in in a couple of weeks for the dome. I don't know what the situation is going to look like in a couple of months for these shows in September. I would hope that they have at least. I mean, Joel, you think fifty percent capacity is a break even? I'm not sure what the capacity is for the the Saitama dome actually. 
But uh, I mean, I saw something about them being allowed to have up to 10,000 fans. Funny uh, enough. I mean, if it's a dome, you're figuring they could, for baseball, they could probably fit. I mean, if you're building a fucking dome, you're not building a $19,000 seater. Yeah, <laughs> or 19, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking of it this way, right? So this uh, Wrestle Grand Slam at the Tokyo Dome, let's say they get 10,000 people. Selling 10,000 tickets, that is basically your dominion, isn't it? You know, dominion. At this time of the year, they are used to having revenue for about, you know, 12,000 tickets if they sell out of Sakajo Hall. And then, so this one uh, at the Saitama, the Saitama MetLife Dome, maybe that's like taking the spot of a, a King of Pro Wrestling where they would normally be able to sell around like 9,000 tickets for uh, Sumo Hall, but obviously they can't do that. So hence moving it to a bigger venue where they can sell a similar number. All right, let me ask you this. Um, oh, I'm looking, might be looking at the wrong one. Okay, let me. Oh, there it is. This is yeah. This is a legitimate baseball stadium, Joel. I'm looking at pictures right now. Uh, and again, I'm just looking at pictures. It reminds me of that. Remember the uh, the Sabo Dome? Is it? The, is this? That's not the same place, is it? No. It looks very much like it though. That Sabo Dome. Um. This is a this is a baseball stadium. It doesn't look like it has two tiers. It looks like it just has one. I'm sorry, Damon. I, mean, I think it is. I think it's the same stadium. I just searched for Sabu Dome, and it's coming up with MetLife Dome. Ah! All right, so we know this building. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I was like, this looks really fucking familiar. Uh, okay, so then, yeah, it's the old Sabu Dome. Okay. Um, what's the capacity on that? Let me, let me bring up Wikipedia here. I mean, it, look, I don't even think I need to do that. It's 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 a baseball stadium. Uh, with it looks like one level that goes all the way around the building. So I'm going to say, I'm going to guesstimate and say it's a thirty to 40,000 seater. Um, so 25 half, 20 half, we'll, we'll call it 15 to 20 is half. That I think they would, yeah, I mean, that, that would be, I think they would be very happy with that. And I'm sure they got some kind of discounted price, um, even though baseball season is air. I think at that time, who knows? I'm fucking speculating, but I'm I'm saying they need they probably need at least ten thousand people in this building to break even. Okay, let's move on to discuss some actual wrestling that took place, and let's touch base with the Young Lions gauntlet that's been going on at the moment. And nice, yeah, I've been really enjoying this. The the opponents for Suji and whoever they're giving them so much in the ring. The, the Tai Chi and Zack Sabre Jr. match is both fantastic. The Ibushi Uemura match was terrific as well. Um, let's talk about Yu Uemura first. Rather than, you know, going match by match, I've just sort of overall thoughts on where you see him at the moment. Because, I mean, I've just made a checklist of things that I like about him. Right, his look. He's incredibly good looking. Very, very handsome. Great body. Yep. So that box is ticked. He's got the intensity, like the, the opening flurry against Tai Chi. And then in the Ibushi match, he's doing, you know, some shit talking, slapping Ibushi when he had him in the, the setup for the Boston Crab. So he's got that intensity. He's got the crispness of the striking. There was a really great forearm exchange with Ibushi. And, and also, I mean, on a side note, the fact that Ibushi basically beat the shit out of him. I, I see that as a mark of respect. So we right, can go right. toe-to-toe in those striking exchanges. He's dabbling in a bit of high flying. There was a nice crossbody from the apron against Tai Chi. Uh, an incredible drop kick against Ibushi. The, the height, the hang time he got on that drop kick was was remarkable. So he's got that, the high flying. He's got uh, his bumping is really good. It's like he turned himself inside out for Tai Chi's Enzo Giri when they had their match. I think his selling is really good. You know, selling that like glazed expression on his face from Tai Chi's high kick, you know, coughing and spluttering from the body shots. The finish of the Ibushi match where he was twisted into a like a friggin' pretzel that looked great as well. So he can sell brilliantly. And I just feel that he's got some of the best pure baby face energy since, well, Ibushi, I guess. And, and I think his choice of opponents is bringing that out. It was very fitting that he was given Ibushi in this most recent match. It, it felt like, you know, past Ibushi and, and present Ibushi, like like he was wrestling himself almost. Uh, he's got the facial expressions down pat. Like the, he's really selling the struggle to execute each move. Like it's not just like, oh, I'm going to do a suplex. Bang, there's a suplex. Sometimes you need to, two or three bites at the cherry to to get the move done. Like nothing is coming easily for him. So, you know, going over those features and attributes that he's got, he's, in my opinion, he's got everything. There's there's nothing yeah. that he is lacking. He, I don't even think he needs much of a gimmick because the fans love him. 
And for me, his chase, ultimate chase for, for the IWGP title, because that's his ceiling. I, I think anything less than that is a, a disappointment. You know, quite frankly, I think that's nailed on that he's going to be a future ace of the company. But that that chase for whoever I think is the next great story that New Japan have up their sleeve. And I'm really excited to be in on it at the ground floor. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about Yuya Wemura? I think he's the most well-rounded young lion they have. And I'm going to go so far as to say he, he looks like one of the most well-rounded guys on the lower tier of the roster, right? I mean, again, the the the, the confidence that he has, he never really looks lost. He always seems to have, you know, a, a, a solid idea and a non-hesitation to what is going on in the ring. Um, and I can't say that f- necessarily for other guys. Uh, you're right. His selling is, is uh, again, basic, but spot on. Uh, young legs are amazing, right? Uh, I, I, to me, I think we've, I, I feel like we got the new king of the dropkick right now. Um, the height that he can, he can get on that fucker is, is remarkable. Again, young legs help that. Um, one of the things that stood out to me, so he's in the corner and Tai Chi makes him eat a kick and it took him off his feet. But again, him selling it in the corner was fantastic. And again, him getting a little bit of a rough house, right? And showing some rough housing, right? Taking it to the outside um, on Tai Chi. The, the one thing that really stood out to me too was this. There's just this one little spot. And again, I think you got to get Tai Chi to, uh, some uh, some credit on this as well. Um, he goes for the uh, he uh, crossbody outside the ring, hits it, fucking pumps up. Everybody's pumped. Holy shit! Good, great job. Again, he's stretching stretching it, uh, out his repertoire of of moves. Right, tries it again, gets fucked, gets a little overconfidence, shits the bed. Tai Chi finish. One, you know, that away we go, right? I love that. I love the fact that he hit it once, got a little confident, got a little pumped up, got a little, got, got a little high on himself. Thought, okay, I'm, I, 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 I got it once. Maybe later on in the match, I can hit it again. Tries it again inside the ring, fucks up, leads, leads to the finish. I, I love that. I thought that was really great. Now he's the most well-rounded guy, uh, I think. From from just seeing him in singles matches, in all of the singles matches, right? Him, Bushi, uh, I think he's. I think he's. Look, I, I don't want. I don't want to put this on a guy who, you know, what is he? Early twenties. He, he made his debut. What, two thousand eighteen. I don't want to put this on on a guy this young. He's got to be a future champion, right? Right. I don't think anybody's doubting the fact that this guy's going to be a future champion. Again, injuries, politics, all that shit that goes into pro wrestling that you know derails a talent like this still has to go into play, right? We all know that. On paper, this guy's this guy has gold written all over him. And uh, he will be facing Shingo Takagi in his next singles match. That'll be on July the 2nd. So I'm really excited about that one. Um, Short term, I'm not sure if he's going to land as a a junior initially or a heavyweight. I mean, he could be either. I think ultimately we're looking at IWGP World Heavyweight Champion for him. I think that that's, in my opinion, that's a lock. But uh, let's move on to Yota Suji, who is a guy who is getting more and more adventurous with his moveset. You can see that lucha influence for him. And I've been really impressed with the, the slickness of his grappling and his transitions because in months gone by, I've said, you know, he's tried stuff that hasn't really come off. It's looked a bit clunky, but much, much smoother this time, especially in the Zack Sabre Jr. match. Like a really improved back and forth with the pinning combinations. Very, very well executed. And so, you know, he, he is more than just a, a beefy boy who can throw bombs. He, he can do that, but you can tell he's working really hard to diversify because, like I said, it's been hit and miss over the last year, but it all really clicked into place with that ZSJ match. And I think he looks great. He's thick. He's muscular. He's looking a lot leaner. The hair and the beards, 
<laughs> it kind of reminds me actually of Jon Snow from Game of Thrones. You know, maybe that could be his gimmick. He can be some sort of medieval northern lord with a, a fur cloak and a big sword. But uh, uh, you know, seriously, I think he's someone who I think is going to do well regardless. But with the right gimmick, he can get a huge boost. Like I, I don't know if you want to do something you know, in the mould of a Jeff Cobb, like a no-nonsense, ass-kicking kind of thing, like some sort of mercenary or high gun. I, I don't know. But he, he's got more range than that. But maybe that's where you start. You know, he's really into the Mexican stuff. I don't know, <laughs> like some sort of machete gimmick, like Danny Trejo kind of thing. Uh, but uh, I, I, he's just an incredibly interesting wrestler. He's facing Ibushi for his next singles match on July the 2nd. Uh, we've got questions about him. So Jim says, is it time to start considering Suji as a future main eventer? Uemura has always been more obvious as a top star, but with his improvement over the last year, great matches in the gauntlet, and far more confident look in his eyes. He should at least be in the conversation, in my opinion. Dr. Jonathan says, based on the series, do you think Yota could be a big star for New Japan? And Andrew says, with Tsuji already 27, should they graduate him as soon as this trial series ends instead of sending him on excursion? So, Damon, your thoughts on Yota Tsuji, please. Okay, so I, while I agree with a lot of what was said, um, I do have small concerns that I think... Uh, are only concerns in the sense of he can improve on that and that will come with time and that will come with experience and that will come with um, getting more in in ring time. Especially in, in the Zach match, it felt to me that there were times, and again, it wasn't all the time, it wasn't like it was a complete clusterfuck it was, by any stretch of the imagination, but there were times where he did seem to kind of lose his way and Zach had to had to be the guy to to kind of get him to to go I don't want to say go along with what was was planned that's that's not the word but like he needed to be to be brought along wet nursed is that maybe maybe that's true? uh through certain points of the match where he did look a little bit lost and he did look a little bit hesitant and he did look a little bit okay what am i doing um and Zach you know, helped helped navigate those waters. Um, And again, that comes with experience and that comes with time. So I still think that while he's improved vastly from what we've even seen before, there's still room to grow there. And I I think excursions help that, right? Again, more ring time, different opponents, getting comfortable with different styles, getting comfortable of, okay, what do I do when? Um, Getting comfortable in in building those hope spots, in building uh, a match, and build and 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 telling a, a good story physically uh, in ring. So I think there's improvements to be made there, right? I think there's there's a a wonderful upside there, and I've seen vast improvements over you know just a few months ago from that, let alone years. But I still think there's there's growth potential, and I still think there's growth potential on the other side too. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't I, I don't I don't think you know any of these guys we're putting the titles on tomorrow. But I just noticed it a little bit more uh, with Yoda th- th- than others, expect you know, especially in these matches. So uh, excursions, I think I think would would do. I th- here's the thing. I think excursions would do both of them. Very well. Um, but I think when you see these singles matches, and as much as I'm enjoying them, you do see a little bit of holes. You do see a little bit of 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 things that they can improve on. And that's and here's the thing. As much as we're enjoying them, and as much as, as these guys are giving a lot to these young lions, this is this is a big reason why we're even having these matches. And and they have these matches in the past with other young lions that were at a point where it's like, okay. You're ready to take off the training wheels. Um, so, yeah. But I think, yep, he's got a great look. He's got a great physique. He's improving vastly. Um, there's plenty more to do. Um, I don't even think, I don't even know if, if like, a weird, weird, like, you know, he doesn't have to come back and be Watanabe evil. He doesn't need to come back and be Okan. Um, but maybe they do. <laughs> they, you know, they don't have to come back and be Master Watto. Um, it's really weird. Like when we talk about those three guys and where they are in the company, it, isn't it? Isn't it weird? Because I, to me, Watanabe was a guy um, that everybody kind of thought would would be. I don't know. I don't think everybody was as high on Watanabe 
as other people might be on other young Lions. And I think Kawato is one of them, right? I think people were much higher on Kawato than they were on Watanabe. Um, and I think people are higher on this crop than they are with the others. Um, but it's interesting to see where where everybody's landing. Uh, I don't know if I'm ready to, to go gold yet. I'm, I'm talking big boy gold, as as confident as I was before. But he'll get something. He'll be a, listen, he'll be a, he'll be a focal point in the next five years. That's for that I I'll guarantee. So Sandra the Giant said, "Who's coming out of their gauntlet with more star power?" I'm struggling to pick between the two. I feel both have been excellent and a few future stars but yeah I, I guess we've answered that I think we're both uh, in agreement that Uemura has got more upside but not by too much you know we're not writing off no. Yotosuji by any means um, no I mean uh, one issue is that maybe they graduate both guys at the end of this corner because you know, they've been young lines since like March 2018 it's been a very long time so they could definitely do that I don't think either of them need to go on an excursion per se but there is the issue about who replaces them because they do need young lines there to you know work the opening matches and do the dojo duties. They have Yuto Nakashima. I don't know what the status of him is since you know he wrestled for thirty seconds and hurt his shoulder. They've got gay kids, um, so I don't know. There's an issue there with numbers for young lines for, for me, but uh, just uh, something to keep an eye on going forward. And also, I just thought it was notable that Kota Ibushi and uh, Zach Sabre Jr. and Tai Chi were three people that were chosen to work with both young Lions in these singles matches. Yeah. So uh, obviously yeah. all three guys very well respected to to be able to be uh, valuable opponents in, in these corner matches. So yeah, yeah you, you, there. Nicole brought that up to me. Yeah, usually those are reserved for dads, right? Mm-hmm. Usually that's, you know, you, you would see a lot of the dads taking that role. So yeah, it is, it is nice that uh, they did change that made that a lot more interesting to me anyway um and again i think i feel like it's different guys and different different styles so they can get used to um a singles match again singles match guys singles match and they don't they don't they don't you know they don't fall off the trees i'm doing a lot of tree analogies today uh they don't fall off the trees so yep good stuff i i I like that but here's the thing too i liked everything that i've seen so far And, and 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 when we talked about it previous we kind of knew we would, right? We kind of knew we would. And and we're probably exactly where we thought we would be when it comes to these gauntlet matches. Okay, let's touch on uh, the Kizuna Roads show that was on Tuesday, June 22nd. The main event was the Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Championship match with the champions Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto, and Tomohiro Ishii successfully defending against Dick Togo, Yujiro Takahashi, and Evil. So Ishii... Uh, pinned Dick Togo after a vertical drop brain buster to successfully retain the never openweight six-man championships. I think they might have broken some records in the process as well. Uh, Peter made uh, her return here for Bullet Club. Yeah. And, I mean, they, they, these championships, they're just proof of concept that if you book it properly and have good matches that have enough time and a well-built and meaningful reigns and people taking it seriously and putting it over in the promos, that they will become uh, interesting and exciting and meaningful for the fans. And uh, w- what I love about this Chaos team is the way that they lift their opponents into these like these high-intensity bursts of action. So, you know, for example, if Yujiro and Ishii have laid out a, a two-minute segment together, Yujiro ain't going to be sleepwalking through that with the rest of us. You know, I- Ishii, Yoshihashi, Goto, they're all tagging in. They're all wanting their bit to be the most memorable. Yoshihashi is, is consistently good now. You know, there are no misses from him. He's, a, he's just a, a good wrestler that you can rely on. He's adapting to the clap crowds well. He's being louder. He's being more aggressive. In general, you can see his confidence has grown. I'm sure that's due to him winning the uh, Super J-Cast Most Improved Award in, in 2020. I thought <laughs> sure. the, the evil Ishii exchanges were fun. I thought evil looked a lot more interesting than here than he has done for months. It, it reminded me of that terrific New Year Dash uh, tag match that had a lot of the same guys involved. Um, and some of the Yoshihashi Goto team moves are really creative, really snappy. You know, they sold that this is a team that got great synergy. They're working hard behind the scenes to be an effective and, and, and uh, cohesive tag team. And uh, Yoshihashi and Evil, they've got surprisingly good chemistry. They had a great G1 match last year. They picked up again here. Um, you know, it might upset some people, but I think a lot of these wrestlers right now, they're better as tag wrestlers than singles wrestlers. They aren't as good at filling a singles match with comparing wrestling. So these kind of matches hide their flaws, accentuate their strengths and just make re- for really good watching. The, the work is several clear steps above a, a standard 
multi-man tag on a Road 2 show. You can tell the wrestlers they've got newfound respect for these titles. They're working way harder to make them uh, the, these championship matches good than they would have done in years gone by. You know, even Dick Togo was in there taking a, yeah. a second rope brain buster bump. And we're all used to the Bullet Club shenanigans by now, but um, some of the, the stuff they did, like, you know, the chair stuff, I thought was really nasty. The evil laying in the shots to Ishii's back and the, the Dick Togo pedigree onto the chair. I thought that was surprisingly brutal from Bullet Club shenanigans that are usually a bit cheesy. I, and I, honestly, this really over-delivered on my admittedly low expectations. I thought everyone worked really hard. Bullet Club left a lot of the, the overly corny cheating spots at home. Last few minutes were breathless. They were hard-hitting. And Damon, it's another banger in the Never Six Man division. You know, for, for me, it's time we start talking about this Chaos team as one of the best tag teams in New Japan's recent history. You know, not just six-man teams. I'm talking tag teams in general. So I, I very, very hard on this match. What did you think of it? You were high on it more than I was. <laughs> um, I thought it was very good. Don't get me wrong. I thought it was very good um, considering what was on the other side, um, the non-chaos side, the Bullet Club side. Uh, I got to tip my hat to Yujiro, who did a lot of the heavy lifting there, right? Um, was was there a bit of smoke and mirrors when, you know, when, you know, there's plenty of ref bumps, again, plenty of ref bumps, plenty of nonsense. Um, you mentioned that chair shot, and it was loud. It was, it was, it, it, it was hard uh, across the back. And again, I, I did like it. Red shoes, we'll, we'll put that aside. We'll just, we'll just put it aside. It is what it is. It's bull cub. You're going to get shenanigans. Great. Um, I thought the match itself was very good, minus the nonsense um, that you knew you were going to get. It, it, it blew away my expectations. I had very low going in. Uh, there was nothing on that Bullet Club side that even remotely I, I found. <laughs> like when you texted me and said, this match is really good. Um, I did kind of look at it a little side eyed and was like, "All right, okay, let's see, let's let's see what the Chaos Team can do." Uh, Yoshihashi is is fantastic in this role. Uh, Hiroki Goto is fantastic in this role. Uh, and again, for everything that you said, it it hides weaknesses, um, it exposes the positives of everybody in that ring, um, and they're able to go long. Did they put out more effort than they normally would for, for a six-man tag uh, in Cork and Hall on a Road 2 show? Absolutely. 100%. From, from all in, involved. I thought Yujiro was a star in this match. Um, I, I know I sound like an old man when I say this. There was stuff that took me out of the match. There was stuff that I just I – just, it was hard for me to just hand wave, again, with the nonsense. Um, I think evil right now – um, I'm I'm really lost on evil. I don't know I don't know what we do with this guy. Um, I, 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 look, if I had my way, uh, I would have those never six man titles defended more often because I think they're highlights of New Japan shows. Uh. Will they get votes for Tag Team of the Year? Yes, as well they should. To me, consistently, I aside from Dangerous Techers, give me a, give me another. T- All right, let's put it this way: Are you voting Techers first, or are you voting Six Man first? I think I'm voting the Six Man's first. Hmm. I mean, every time they're out, these are good matches. I I mean, they might be... It's hard not to, isn't it? It really is hard not to. They're deserving. They're making the most of a situation. They might. They might very well be my number one. They might very well be my number one. And again, I think this... If, if Goto felt fresh, 
Ishii felt fresh. Yoshihashi feels fresh. Just in this role. It is a nice... I, again, I just wish we would see more of it. They don't always have to headline these shows. Could they put them... They, and they don't always have to... Get, well, I guess it might be the charm of it. You know, having them go over 20 minutes. I was going to ask you that, David. Like, do you give these titles a, a dome defense? Because, yeah, I said, I, I said on Twitter, a lot of the magic comes from having that loyal, faithful Korakuen crowd who've been with this team. And particularly Yoshihashi from Jump Street giving them the main event, letting them have lots of time, really lets them shine. If you were to, you know, cram them into a, you know, 10, 12 minute match in a, uh, an echoey three quarters empty Tokyo Dome, maybe that will be doing them and, and the titles a disservice. It, it might. Um, and I don't know if, if, like we always complain about, oh my God, Okada, does it have to go 35 minutes? Blah, 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 blah. blah. Okay. I think the charm of these matches is the fact that they do go that long. And because normally on shows uh, uh, that are, you know, a little bit more of a spotlight on, they are an undercard match that goes 10 minutes or it's a gauntlet or, you know, it's just, we're just usually, usually, they usually, you know, don't give them anything. They're filler. <sighs> yeah, why, why? I mean, why not? Why not? They've proven that they can deliver. They've proven that they can deliver. On one of these big shows, they should have a... Again, we don't have to make it a semi-main event. We don't have to make it a main event. But a post-intermission match, first match back, give them a little time, that might be good. On one of these dome shows, they could do that. I say do it. They, they, they've proven they can, they can... They've proven that spot. They've earned that spot. Let's put it that way. They've earned that spot. Well, I'm very excited by the next challenger. So uh, this is going to kick off next Thursday, July the 1st at Korakuen Hall. We're going to start off with three preview singles matches where we'll have Yoshihashi against Hiroshi Tenzan, uh, Hiroki Goto against Satoshi Kojima, and Tomohiro Ishii against Yuji Nagata. And then on Friday, July the 2nd at Korakuen, uh, we're getting them defended Twice within the space of a week, Damon. The never overweight six man tag team championship yep. match uh, will be Yoshihashi, Ishii, and Goto defending against Nagata, Kojima, and Tenzan. I, I am well up for this one. I think this is a great challenging team. Yeah, this should be really good, right? I'm, I'm pumped for this one. See, now look. I'm going to. All right. I know we're, we're, I'm, I'm doing a hard left turn here. This is ex- this is an exciting time to be a New Japan fan, isn't it? Like it just feels like, even though we have people that we've seen for years, this feels fresh, right? These guys have wrestled each other in various formats for years, yet this match feels fresh, and I'm hyped for it, right? Doesn't it feel like? And, and I can. And, 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 I could say this with some confidence. Doesn't it feel like there's some life and some energy and the people are may have jumped off the bandwagon are missing out on some really cool shit right now that maybe if this pandemic didn't happen, we wouldn't be seeing. Don't you feel like this? This is. I don't know. I don't know if energy is the word I can use to describe it, but doesn't it feel like there's energy? That wasn't here mm, just a handful of months ago? I think so. I, I think basically from New Japan Cup onwards, New Japan really turned it around, pulled their finger out, and, and it's been consistently good. There have been very, very few shows or matches where I've tuned in and thought, ah, you know, this was a waste of my time. It's all been really good. And I get people are burnt out on the clap crowds. Hopefully that, well, I mean, who knows how long, much longer that's going to go on. But it's not really damaging my enjoyment of the product. So between that... These big shows we've got over the horizon, these, you know, the six man titles, the tag titles being really well booked, uh, resurgence on the horizon in the States. Right. It, right. I think there's a lot to be excited about. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's very easy to hand wave and say, oh, it's not what it was. Okay. You're right. And that is, that is the truth. It's not. That's good. Look, I, look, truth be told. And Joel, I, I'm not speaking for you, but I think I echo these thoughts. There were times where this was a struggle. 
right? Just just getting the energy to watch these shows was a struggle, right? And I think a lot had to do with just doing this show of, all right, let me watch, <laughs> you know, right? I don't feel that way anymore. I'm I'm excited for things on the horizon. I'm excited where we are now. I'm excited for strong. I'm excited for the tag team situation. I'm excited for the six man. I'm excited for our heavyweight champion. I'm excited for these big shows right around the corner. I'm excited for G1. I'm excited by all these little dipping our toes and all these other promotions and the people that come in. I'm excited that Strong seems to be the destination in the United States. I'm excited for that T-shirt I just sent you. I'm getting that fucker. (laughs) I'm excited for the T-shirt you sent me. I'm not getting that fucker. But I'm excited for people to get it. Uh, I think this is a very weird yet exciting and somewhat challenging time. To be a New Japan fan. I, I and, and, and I'll go so far as to say. It's. F- it's fresh. And it's renewed my love of this company. And this product. So. Hats off. I mean that could, that could fall apart in a fucking month. Let's be honest. But it has. It has definitely jump started. And, and here's the thing. You're right, from New Japan Cup on. Even with United Empire, even with Will, even with, you know, I'm in. I'm in. And there's plenty of stuff where we've hand-waved. And there's plenty of places where I feel like they've misstepped. But overall, I feel like this promotion feels, it doesn't feel, here's the thing. Everything that I listed, here's one thing I won't say. This promotion is not stale. This promotion is not stale right now. It could have been very easy for them to just tread water while they've got this COVID situation going on. But yeah, they've taken risks uh, and they've done things that some people have disliked. Um, But um, to be fair, I think starting this year, they they are now putting their best feet forward. There are a lot of stuff uh, and, and features of New Japan in sort of mid to late 2020 that people were not keen on. But I feel that those elements have sort of found their place on the undercard or, or the mid cards. They're not a prominent part of the, the, the big title scenes in the company. So I feel that this is a company that, you know, in terms of the in-ring product, at least is pretty much firing on all cylinders. I mean, it's as honestly, dare I say it's as good as it's, it's been for years. You know, when, when have we seen a, uh, an exciting heavyweight tag division and an exciting never six man division and exciting us based division. There's just, there's so much stuff going on at the moment. It, it, yeah, again, I think really exciting time. So people may have dropped off the bandwagon. I think it's a, a good time to be getting back on personally, but um, there you go. Um, question here from Dr. Gary. He says, um, what is next for Yoshihashi once chaos do lose those six man titles? Goto and Ishii, I can see mixing up in the never title, maybe heavyweight tags. What happens to the most improved wrestler of the COVID era? Damon, can this chaos team just hold the never six man That's titles forever? <laughs> just don't drop <laughs> yeah. them, please. Right, right, right. Or just have it flip flop back and forth. Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it's 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 really something that's worked uh, uh, across the board. Um, again, eventually they're going to drop those titles. We get it. Uh, keep them together. There's no reason to break them up. There really isn't. There is no reason to break them up. It's working. Ride the hot hand as long as you can. Um, again, they can lose the belts, but, you know, fight to win them back. Um, there's plenty of, 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 of ways you can do that. I don't think – I don't – look – we got to sit here with Rapungi 3K still, right? We could sit here. We, we, you know what I mean? We can hang on to uh, the, the, the never six man uh, uh, titles for, for chaos, right? We're, we're fine with that. By the way, I, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. And if I did, that theme music for Rapungi 3K is horrific, right? Can we agree on that? That new music, it's terrible, right? Uh, I'm I'm not a fan. It sounds like something sort of from a weird prog rock album more than <laughs> an appropriate theme for uh, right. 
lovely tag team. Terrible. Uh, just awful. But anyway, uh, yes, eventually they will lose. But I, I say keep them in. Now, again, then they have a – now not only that, because right now it just seems like um, it's to a large degree, it, you know, well, you know, I take that back. I was going to say it feels like it's just random tag teams against them. Um, but with Bullet Club, at least there is there is some mini feud there. Um, I want to see like a true six man tag feud would be nice. That that would be really fun, like a real true six man tag feud. Um, you know who I'd like to see? Maybe like a Juice Finley and uh, oh, I don't know somebody else. Right, that would be a nice never six man thing, right? Um, I could I could get into that. I could get I could I, I keep them. They're, they're perfect where they are. Let's not let's not blow that up yet. William says thoughts on making Dick Togo a full time wrestler again, so he has no, no time to book or be a manager. He killed it in Tuesday's <laughs> six man main event. Ah, <laughs> uh, look, I would prefer not, but I will say this: he he. While he's not something that I look forward to seeing, he do, he is smart in the ring. He's very smart in the ring. Um, he does hide as many weaknesses as he has at his age right now. He still looks good. I mean, you know, all things considered. Um, but yeah, I mean, I look, the less Dick Togo I see, the better, I think, at this point. Um, I'm okay with that. And, but here's the thing. He's not my least favorite. Shockingly enough, he's not my least favorite New Japan Pro Wrestler. Okay, well, let's move on to the uh, show that was on Wednesday, June 23rd. Main event was IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships, which were won by the challengers. El Fantasmo, Taiji Ishimori, defeating the champion, showing Yo. So uh, ELP pinned Yo after 26 minutes, 43 seconds, following a sudden death. Um, I wasn't excited about this one. I was expecting it to be... A lot of these junior tag matches are no more than the sum of their parts, but I actually quite like this one. Uh, more than I thought I would. I thought Yo's selling was really good. I thought Sho and Ishimori had some good exchanges. There were some really creative spots to break up pin attempts. There was a bit where Yo hip-tossed ELP onto Ishimori, who had the yes lock on uh, Sho. I thought the Yo and ELP elbow and chop exchange was really good, not something I was expecting to see. I, basically, I thought Yo was a standout performer here. He seemed to be the focus of the match. Uh, and I liked that ELP and Ishimori looked like they'd worked hard to come up with some cool new team moves. And I, I quite like the post-match celebrations, the LP and Ishimori hugging each other. They look genuinely delighted to have won these belts. Um, so, yeah, I, I like this one a lot, Damon. What did you think? I thought it was good. Um, it's certainly not something I'm going to run back and watch again. Um, it was, I, You know what it was? It was a very good junior tag team match. Right? That's exactly the way I would describe it. A very good junior tag match. Um, I, I, I guess I left... With a, more questions than when I came in, um, I did not. I wasn't surprised that that Show and Yo dropped the titles. I just kind of feel like I've seen enough of Show and Yo together, and I know that we were probably the champions of the Show and Yo breakup and the Show and Yo possible feud. Um. I personally feel like both guys took a step back in this little little run with the tag titles. Like f- overall, p- in general, my interest, I think people's interest, I think where they were heading post Rapungi 3K reunion. Um, I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of this run, and I and I'm. I'm hoping this is the last that we see of it. I doubt that's the case, but I'm kind of at the point where it's like, okay, show felt like, you know, while yo was on the shelf, uh, took steps to distance himself from the tag team. Yo being hurt. Okay. Nothing we can do about that. But I think more than ever, I'm ready for those two guys to go their separate ways. Well, luckily we've got Sho going off to start his um, glittering career in Glate as a UWA star wrestler, <laughs> so you don't need to worry about that. I mean, yeah. my question is, what's next for these tag titles? I think there's a high likelihood we're going to go to a, a Kanemaru Desperado feud because <laughs> there are only three uh, junior else, tag right. in this entire division, which uh, 
Yeah, it doesn't excite me, but there you go. It's a, it's a very weak division at the moment. What, what can you do? Um, let's move on to New Japan Strong then. So um, we had the first bout of uh, ignition on Friday, June the 18th. So we started off Josh Alexander uh, taking up the Alex Coglin Challenge Match Series, uh, defeating Alex Coglin in 11 minutes, 25 seconds with Divine Intervention. Um, Alex Cogney is just looking more and more like Ron Swanson each week. He, he has got obscene <laughs> strength and power. Is it really impressive? And Josh Alexander, I've talked about before. I think he's great. I think New Japan should be doing their best to sign him up or, or just get get more dates for him. Junior or heavyweight doesn't matter. He's he's got the bolt for either. Just just get him. Um, you know, it reminded me actually of the the, the Kurt Angle Chris Benoit series of uh, 2001 WWF. Um, just sort of aesthetically reminded me of that. They, these guys really laid into each other with nasty chops. Uh, the grappling was very good. Uh, I, I love the, the chaos theory, the, the sort of the Doug Williams move that uh, um, Josh Alexander pulled off there, and just really, really great in-ring story of the ankle lock against Coglin's power. Really good match. Um, do, do you want me to go through the whole show, Damien? Give your thoughts. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll give my thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the second match was Barrett Brown and Bateman defeating Adrian Quest and Fred Rosser. So Bateman pins Adrian Quest after nine minutes forty-one seconds, following "This Is a Kill." And I, I really like Barrett Brown as Bateman's new protege. He's sort of been mesmerized by this sort of Pied Piper Bateman figure, even dancing to his music in the same way that Bateman does. There's nothing groundbreaking here. It's just a, a solid tag match with a good story where, you know, we started off a few weeks ago with um, Barrett Brown and um, Adrian Quest tagging together. And then Adrian Quest got the pin and Barrett Brown wasn't happy about that because he felt he needed to pick up wins. And then they had a singles match and then Bateman's in his corner and helped him get the advantage. Then Fred Ross's with his anti-bullying thing, trying to even up the score. So it, again, it's really simple stuff, but now we can uh, move on to some singles matches here. Presumably Fred Rosser and um, Bateman can pair off again and we can maybe see uh, another singles match between uh, Adrian Quest and, and Barrett Brown at some point. And yeah, it's it's simple stuff, but it's, it's a simple story well told. And even the, like the, the post-match promo was good from Bateman because he's doing his little mannerisms, but then you've got Barrett Brown in the background who's literally and figuratively looking up to Bateman, copying all of his mannerisms, you know, like a, a little Weasley kid at school who latches onto the playground bully. So I thought that was really fun. And then we had our main event with Satoshi Kojima defeating J.R. Kratos in 11 minutes, 26 seconds, following, of course, a lariat. I'm, I'm just really glad that they're finding meaningful things to do for the dads uh, right now, uh, yeah. particularly Kojima. He's having a, a bit of a renaissance this year. Um, he worked uh, really hard to make J.R. Kratos look good. He took some big bumps. Uh, I mean, this match almost sort of had a, a cartoonish quality to it. Not in a bad way. It was like a sort of a kaiju film. Uh, J.R. Kratos, he, he pulls these really exaggerated facial expressions. He's a bit like a Batman villain. So uh, just a, a really fun show overall. Yep, I agree 100%. Um I know that, and correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, uh, you have some concerns online about holding on to talent for strong. And I think that's a, I think that's the concern a lot of people have. Um, as hyped as we are and as, and as um, excited as we are about strong and the possibilities of, of making that, this even bigger than, than what it is right now, and making it a destination for U.S. wrestlers um, and Japanese wrestlers, um, the idea of guys really working without contracts and without being—I don't want to say locked down, but you know, you know, go getting that talent and keeping that talent is is a concern. And I know that um, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong again, but uh, you tweeted that out, and we got a response from a one. Roque Romero. Uh, what was the response, Joel? Tranquilo? <laughs> Tranquilo and a, a, a pingu gift. So, yeah, I, I, I assume Rocky is one of, if not the, you know, voice in the room that, that has the creative control and, and is steering that strong ship. So I have 100% faith whatever he and or, or that team are doing because it's a great show. But, you know, I see... People like Blake Christian, Alex Zane, Russ Taylor. Not saying that you know those guys are going to light the world on fire in New Japan, but is it, there is a trend there that uh, people catching the eye of other US-based promotions that they're going to end up getting snapped up. Right, and I feel like it is a little bit of a different time where um, the WWE is is 
I mean, it feels like they cut more people than they sign at this point, but they're constantly well, they're, they're looking for that, that are on deals that they feel are not value for money. You know, people on huge contracts, right. you know, like your Braun Strowman, they've obviously looked at that and thought, well, that's not good value, so get rid of him. You know, maybe they'll sign him back up a, 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 a lower contract. But, you know, I don't think they're breaking the bank for the likes of right. uh, Alex Zane and, and Russ Taylor and Blake Christian. Right. But I also think that I don't know if that that idea of we got to sign every single independent pro wrestler there is out there um, like they did in past years, it felt like, um, is their motivation right? as, as of right now. Um, I hope not. Right. I hope not, because that does yeah. spell trouble. Yeah. It feels like Nick Khan is a person who would push back against that. You know, just signing people so that other promotions can't have them is, is not something that makes sort of strict business sense for, for someone like Nick Khan, at least. Right, right. I, I guess that's my biggest concern is that um, I don't want this to be. And I had this, I had this same thought about New Japan, and I still do. Um, again, I don't want this to be a place where people, you know, improve the value of their stock. And then decide, oh, well, I'm going to go sign, you know, I'm doing this so that I can make more money here and get eyeballs on me from this company. Um, Like, I I just, that, again, I'm not going to tell a wrestler not to make as much money as they can for the short amount of time that they're in pro wrestling. Sure, absolutely. Go for it, my man. Uh, But it does, again, my heart is with the product. Uh, And I would love to see that somehow get a little bit more solidified. While I like the idea of bringing guys in and out and having everything fresh and, and, oh, it feels like the territories. Eh, Unfortunately, there is one elephant in the room and it's an elephant with a pretty big checkbook. Yes, we all know the territories and how that story ended back in the days. But uh, I'm confident that they know what they're doing over at Strong. Um, Let's preview this week's Ignition. He's got some tasty matches. We've got uh, the DKC and Kevin Knight against uh, Wheeler Utah and Fred Yehai. We've got a singles match between Rocky Murrow and Clark Connors, which I'm really looking forward to. And then the main event, very tasty, Carl Fredericks challenging Tom Lawler for the strong openweight Ooh. championship. So do you think we're going to see a title change here, Damon? Nope, but <laughs> um, it's, I'm going to see a great, um, I think we're going to see a really great match. I'm, I'm pumped for this. I, um, I feel like I need to see a great match to remind myself that Carl Fredericks is really good because I think there may be some fears that we're starting to miss the boat on him. I don't think that's the case, but I think we all need to see a singles match where we sit up and be like, "Yeah, this guy is the real deal." That that I you you read my mind on that. Yep, it's been it's been a while since we were strutting down the street with our Carl Fredericks banner, right? Because um, at this point, I think it, Clark yeah. Connors and and Alex Coglin, uh, uh, Clark Connors, I think has definitely overtaken him. Alex Coglin is close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, and not for nothing. That's that's a that's a good problem to have right now, right? But again, it would be nice just to remind people, right, of how great this guy is, um, and he has a perfect opportunity against an opponent that is going to be super fun. Uh, yeah, I think everybody needs to carve out some time on uh, this weekend to uh, to to check that out. I think this is going to be really good. Um, they'll give them time, I think, right? They'll give them, they'll give them plenty of time. So yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm psyched up. Uh, Bash says, do you think Tom Lawler's fully done with MMA now after he uh, putting his gloves down in the octagon after his recent win and should New Japan sign him up quick fast? Yes and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. And again, um, I, I don't, he's a guy that, that has um, a name He's obviously holding their title. Um, there is that MLW connection. Yeah, I mean, I, he's he's an important piece to what they have right now in the states. I don't think, I think it's a no brainer that you you, you want to hold on to him. And I and here's the thing: the good news is is that it feels to me like he's a guy that wants to be there and wants to be a part of it. So, yeah, absolutely. But I, uh, is his MMA career done? I mean, again, ACH, <laughs> Leo Rush. Uh, you know, maybe the, it's the opposite for left MMA. His hat but... and his gloves in the ring didn't he, after one of his <laughs> right. WrestleMania matches. Right. It was, so, take that with a It pinch was a bit of a yeah. It was it was a bit of a pro wrestling moment, wasn't it? All right. There's a uh, one more thing I want to touch on before we go because uh, we've been running quite long here today. Um, beginning in three weeks on Strong is the Tag Team Turbulence uh, tournament. Yes. So we've got Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson 
TJP and Clark Connors, Chris Dickinson and Brody King uh, in a team known as the Violence Unlimited, DKC and Kevin Knight, uh, Danny Limelight and JR Kratos representing Team Filthy, Yuji Nagata and Ren Narita, Wheeler Yuta and Fred Jehai, and Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs, who are the West Coast Wrecking Crew. Uh, so we have the brackets, Damon. I've sent them over to you. You got them there? I got them. I got them right here. Yes, well, we I can, do. I'll tell you what. Mm-hmm. Sexiest tag team right there, Brody King and Chris Dickinson, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if I... Well, I don't know, actually. They, I, if I had the book, I would be tempted to make some new stars. I'd be looking at, you know, maybe a Fred Yehi and Willie Utah. But let's see how this plays out. Um, should we run through our picks? Should we do a quick bracket bust? Yeah, why not? Yeah, let's bracket bust. Let's do it. All right, so uh, Carl Anderson, uh, Good Brothers against Clark and TJP. It's got to be good brothers, right? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you would think just by, you know, name and where they are in the pro wrestling ladder. Depends on, on how long they got Carl and Doc in. You know what I mean? Like, it depends on oh, so like, what see, their I, schedule I think is. This whole tournament is a vehicle to get them back through the door in yeah. New Japan on a, a more long-term basis. I think they're going to... Maybe we'll have the, the final of this tournament at Resurgence. And, yeah, I I, I think... that They're on there. They, they will be the bookies' favourites for me. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll have to check who the bookies' favourites actually are. But gun to my head, if I said who's winning this, it would be them. So I guess I've just spoiled the whole segment. But, uh, you, yeah, well, you, well, you well, think I mean, Clark the... and TJP have got a shot here, do you? I do. I actually do. Um... I mean, look, if, if, if I'm looking at this on paper, um, I would definitely see Carl and Doc, Brody King, Chris Dickinson final, right? Are we, are we in agreement with that? Um, yeah, okay. I think, yeah, I'm with you on that. Okay, well, let's go through the brackets then. So uh, uh, who have you got on this, the top left side? Good brothers against All right, top left. Clark and TJP. I'll, I'll go Doc and Gallows because it makes sense. But I, I, I would not be surprised to see them lose. Uh, but okay, we'll go Doc and 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 Carl. Okay, and Carl. Um, then uh, what do we got? Yep. Nagata and Narita against uh, Fred J. High Wheeler Utah. I again, I, I really think you want to be putting guys like Fred J. High and Wheeler Utah forward here as you know the stars of tomorrow. So I think they should win. If I were in charge, they yep. would win. But I don't think they will. Yeah. I think Nagata and Ren are going through. So you think uh, Yuji and Ren, Carl and Doc? Yes. Hmm. Again, I'm trying to like figure out how many matches they taped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I'm like, all right. Uh, I just think this is a great time to 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 put over Fred and Wheeler. Um, and I, that's all I can get in my mind. Um, so I'm going there. I'm going Fred and Wheeler. Okay, so then uh, I've got a bracket uh, on the left side of Good Brothers against Yuji and Ren, and I've got a Good Brothers going yep. through to the final. You, who have you got on your I got the same. I got the same, but Fred and Wheeler, uh, Doc and Carl and, and Good Brothers go on to the finals uh, on the left side. Okay, uh, Kev- on the top right side, we've got Kevin Knight and the DKC against the West Coast Wrecking Crew, Jarrell Nelson, Royce Isaacs. I think West Coast Wrecking Crew are going through here. Yep, I agree. And then Violence Unlimited, uh, Brody and Dickinson against Team Filthy, Jack Crater, Stanley Limelight. I think we have uh, Violence Unlimited going through. I agree, yes, correct, which would give us uh, West Coast, Violence I, again, I think Brody King and Chris Dickinson not only go to the finals, but I think they win. I okay. Do. Um, I, I, I think, so. yeah, I, I agree. I think that is your final, and I think we see that final at Resurgence. I think we're going to have yep. Good Brothers against Violence Unlimited at Resurgence. That could be really good, right? Yeah, it should be. I mean, I, I, Good Brothers are an unknown quantity at the moment. I don't know how good they actually are. Uh, from, from what right. I've seen recently... In the multi mans, you know, they're fine. Do I think they're capable of putting on a, a really high quality tag team match? I'm not sure. Uh, so the right. jury's out for me. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the same boat. Like, I don't. I think it could be a good match. And I think that they have worked so many tag matches um, as a team that, that I think they can figure it out to make this good. Um, I will say this. 
personally, I mean, Carl and Doc would probably be my least wanting to see in the finals team. You know what I mean? Like, I would take any of those other teams in the final, but I think that Doc and Gals make sense. Let's put it that way. Uh, and also, Reddit user Dark Horse underscore seventy seven found the trophies for this tournament available to purchase <laughs> online from Maxwell Medals and awards for the bargain price of thirty five dollars. So, um, <laughs> even, even if uh, any of those tag teams listening, if you don't win, you can just buy the trophies yourself for um, seventy bucks. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, I, I might do that. Um, how how do you find? How do you? But like, what's your Google search for that? You know what I mean? Trophies that look like being fisted <laughs> like what do you search for uh, to find those trophies and then find the exact ones brilliant brilliant stuff um if we did yeah. special titles for our episode uh, trophies that look like fisting would be the title of today's episode but uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's wrap it up there uh two hours on the clock here good stuff um red circle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash j dash cast if you want to give us some money for all the hard work we do discord link is in the show notes um I think the, the, the Discord chat quality is uh, in, increasing a lot these days. So it's good, good stuff there. Good, good discussion. At Cobra Kawaii and ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash SuperJCast if you want to get one of our t-shirts. Big thank you to Editor Dan. Find him on Twitter at LousyHero219. Subscribe to the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network for other great shows. There's a really excellent episode of Music on the Mat uh, uh, featuring uh, Benno. They, they talked about CM Punk. So I enjoyed that one a lot. I brought back a lot of good memories. Uh, give us a five snake review on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at the SuperJCast. Thank you everyone for listening and goodbye. Better sleep means a better you. That's why Mattress Firm made the Rest Assured Promise, featuring the best mattresses from America's best brands. For a limited time, save $500 on Temper Breeze mattresses and sleep 8 degrees cooler. Plus, get a $300 instant gift good towards sleep accessories. Our sleep experts have over 200 hours of training, so you can rest assured we'll find the right bed for you. Only at Mattress Firm, America's number one Tempur-Pedic retailer. Offer valid with qualifying purchase. Restrictions apply. Valid at participating locations only. For offer details, visit mattressfirm.com sale.